recovery really is a long-term proposition. What do we actually know about how long that recovery task will be? You know, what do we know after, you know, two years? What are we not going to know for, you know, 10, 100 years? You know, what are the efforts, the resources, the things that we need to do, the things that we need to maintain? Because often we're really good at, you know, action in the middle of an event or immediately after. But what are those things that we need to maintain and continue to do for the years to come? Yeah, you're right, Heather. It's a long-term proposition and we can't assume that uh, if we invest heavily in the, a year or two only that that will mean that recovery will be assured. It's not. Uh, we have to work at this for decades or more. Um, and the recovery will be derailed um, if we don't um, com combat or control effectively the other threats to, to the recovering ecosystems and species, and that will be derailed if there are subsequent future fire events of comparable stat scale to the one we've just witnessed. So it's, it's a challenge, it's, it's, um, and it's something that the whole community and our whole nation needs to work on. Mm -hmm. Recovery will also vary um, between different species and different environments. So recovery for some species, such as those hollow dependent birds and mammals, um, will take centuries. And we have, don't have the, um, we don't have the luxury of uh, that scale to work with at the moment. Mm -hmm. Recovery will also need, mean, need us to manage those things, those threats which are more tractable to manage than fire. So things like invasive species, fragmentation, uh, weeds um, uh, and the like, uh, diseases. So we do, ha we have to try to get on top of those other factors that we can control relatively effectively to ensure that um, many of our species can recover appropriately. Our assessments are that um, many of the species will never come back to their pre-fire population sizes. And, you know, that's a devastating loss um, for our communities, um, particularly. Um, and also, I think I, I made the point previously that we're losing species and environments, not randomly, but disproportionately. It's those really old endemic components of our biodiversity the species that have really slow reproductive rates that are used to a world which has very little disturbance and has been in this country for millions of years. And to lose those species in particular is, would be devastating for our biodiversity yes. heritage. I think, um, you know, that, that point about um, uh, the impacts on, on some of our threatened species um, is, you know, is a, is a really stark and um, yes, yeah, it's it's distressing. And you know, we, we see a lot of signs. We know that the habitat will recover, um, but but you know, has the impact of the fires been too great? And I think some of those findings to suggest that, yeah, you know, habitat takes time, and certain elements of that habitat, such as hollows, you know, ground cover recovers a lot quicker than than say hollows do. So, so you know, the the, the corresponding impact to, to fauna. We need to consider those two, two things um, together. I think um, what we, you know, what we saw is that there was a really big focus and it's great on those big strategic um, actions after the fire. So there was huge investment in, in pest control, um, you know, whether it's, you know, deer control, um, you know, yeah, shoot, shooting ferals, dealing with weeds. And that's, um, and that was so, you know, it's it's so important and um, and really, you know, heartening to see that we what we do know is that we don't actually have great uh, a great understanding of the effectiveness of our actions. Um, and so, some of the research that led by uh, Natasha Robinson is that you know we're. Um, you know, we focus a lot on these actions, but but these fires, I think there's a really good opportunity to sort of learn and understand more about how, um, you know, how long do we need to implement these actions for? Where's the best place to implement these actions? And all of those sort of questions. So we need better better data. So monitoring is, is kind of critical as well. And for general recovery, I think we've got to recognise that there's key points in the landscape that are really key or pivotal for recovery to happen. And that's particularly those patches that were unburnt in these fires to make sure that they're not burnt again in, near, in the near future. Yeah. We also need to try to avoid successive fires in areas that have been burnt yeah. um, because if some environments are burnt repeatedly in too short a cycle, 
then those environments will collapse. They will simply not be recoverable. So the montane ash forests, the mountain and alpine ash forests mm. of, uh, we know, magnificent forests of Victoria and New South Wales and ACT, um, if fires occur, recur too frequently in those forests and those, the mountain ash and the alpine ash will disappear from those systems to a degraded state from which we, mm, recovery is impossible. I think I, I might just um, come in there and sort of talk about, I think one of the things that, um, that I think is really striking is is that um, for in, in many cases, there have been positive stories of things coming back, yes. of species um, persisting in the landscape, you know, people finding quolls where they thought that the landscape was totally devastated. These kind of sites of regrowth and re-sprouting um, and renewal, you know, species in rainforests growing back and, and you know, um, and re-sprouting or, or germinating from seeds. So there are really positive stories of hope in our landscapes themselves, but we need to care for those we need to and, and in an enduring way and I think one of the things you know that um, uh, that was just mentioned earlier is that 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 means that we need to actually the, the sharp injection of funding was it has been incredibly important and very very welcome but it needs to stay you know we need to be able to go back to those places and and manage the weeds in years and years to come so that the rainforest canopy can can recover we need to go back and make sure that those species that did survive the fires, survive in the longer term. And so our systems need to not just be based on a boom bust cycle of emergency response. We need to have that emergency money in reserve, but we also need to be there in the, for, for the long term. Um, I think the other oh. thing is we do need to understand the future. You know, one of the things that we're just beginning to come to grips with is what it means for, you know, further climatic changes to, to impact on our systems, what it means, you know, in terms of the risk of repeated fire, in terms of the risk, risk of, you know, compounding fire and flood events and, and what that might mean for our ecosystems. So we need to know more about that. But part of, it, part of our recovery phase needs to be thinking about building that resilience in our systems now in both our, our ecosystems and our, and our human systems. So, you know, we have got research, for example, on the long-term um, risks uh, to, to ecosystems, to some of those critically um, threatened ecosystems that, that Libby was talking about before, the, you know, things like the rainforests, the, the um, alpine bogs and others, you know, to, to actually understand what is the likely impact of, of further climate change. And, and then, as John says, how do we stop that? You know, how do we actually minimise that? I think it's a good, um, it's a really good point um, uh, at which to start talking about our uncertainty. So, you know, Rachel's sort of talking about, well, we need to start projecting into the future and understanding what the future looks like. But, but in terms of understanding what the impacts of these fires were and, and you, know, how, you know, how long will it take certain taxa to recover, for instance, we, we just don't have um, great data. And I think some, you know, some of the work by Jess Marsh looking into the impacts on the invertebrate community, it's really, you know, those data gaps are really stark. And so what that means then is that, well, do we know how to manage our system effectively for, for biodiversity when we don't know what the impacts are and we don't know, therefore we don't know what the threats are and we don't know what the appropriate management um, levers to pull are. So, so I think, yeah, yeah, just, just to highlight um, you know, we, we do need a, a we do need better understanding of, of, you know, what the current state is and, and how some of our species and communities and habitats sort of respond to different fire regimes. So, you know, thinking, as Rachel says, really thinking very much about the future and how that might be changing. I think we do also need to have a community conversation about what recovery looks like, what people want as the objective of recovery uh, and how much they're willing to to, to um, invest in, in the, the processes that take us take us to that ideal objective because we can't simply assume blandly that recovery will happen without us. It needs to be guided um, and supported. Yeah. So thank you for this great conversation. I think that you know some of the key points that I took out of that is the fact that we need to be in there day after day, week after week, year after year, particularly with you know ferals and wheat and managing actively managing that there is so much more uh, that we you know we don't know and that whole area around you know uncertainty and also having that community and and governments and governance uh, conversations about you know what that future looks like and how we can actually help 
things to recover and how we need to engage with that. So thank you so much for the conversations that we've had. Just really encourage everybody to click on the links on the website so you can find all the amazing reports, delve in the data, um, connecting with people, continue to have these conversations so that we, we learn from what happened, we improve, we build on our knowledge and we work together as we know we can, not just in the moment, but for the years to come so that we have an amazing biodiverse rich Australia with a whole lot of those species that we all love. So thank you very much. Thank you, Heather. Thank you, Heather. Heather.